Welcome to Encounters. I'm Deborah Baer with Vessels of Honor Worldwide. And today we're going to continue our studies this week on uh, being called to battle, preparing for battle. We've got so many areas in this, in the book of First Samuel, that is, uh, Sister Faye, it's, it's an awesome chapter. It it's an awesome story. And too many times people think that's just a children's story. But it was important enough for God to have it in his word. Amen. Right. Amen. And it teaches us and shows us how to prepare for battle, to be called to battle, to be victorious in battle. Amen. So we're going to join me today is uh, Sister Faye Ricchetti. She was with us last week. So thank you, Sister Faye, for joining me again. And thank you for uh, being with me in this in the studies that we're doing, this little ser mini series that we're doing. Today, I want to start off in 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, and to, um, probably the 33rd verse, uh, but I want to kind of catch you up from last week. Remember last week, we're talking about preparing for battle and that uh, David was anointed by, uh, by the king. He, uh, as soon as he saw him, he knew he, uh, David was the new king, to be the new king, mm -hmm. and he anointed him. Well, this scripture here is in, over the next chapter. It's where things are probably starting to get uh, heated up in battle, and there's still uh, some of the army is still you know running in fear. Mm -hmm. And this is what uh, King Saul said to David: "Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth." And I want to stop here just for a moment. Now, this was the man that anointed David king and, and called for him and knew he, he was the one before. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it kind of tells me, now this is, you know, this is out of the book of Deborah. Now, I, mean, I always <laughs> say that when it's, you know, my thoughts. But uh, that uh, maybe a little fear had creeped in, in King Saul's mm -hmm. mind, you know. Oh, yes. And if we're not careful, we can allow others fear to creep over into, you know, to just transfer right. her over into our lives if we're not where we should be. It's very easy to allow all the negativity that's surrounding us right. to uh, just overwhelm us at times. And that's where sometimes we just have to rebuke the devourer and we just have to, you know, just uh, say, it is written. You know, Jesus done that. He told us, yes, it, is, it written. is written. Amen. That's but how. let's go on and read the next verse, what David says. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went, went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and the uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. There, Amen. there was a young man that was confident in God, that was a confident in his, his, you know, his God, that knowing what he was called to do mm -hmm. and knowing that through all these, this time, these years, God was preparing him with military strategy, um, how to fight, when to fight, you know, when to uh, do or say things. And that's something we almost learn. Yes. Amen. Yes. And David knew his God mm -hmm. was real. Yes. His God was alive. And the gods of this giant and the Philistines, wooden and stone, they couldn't talk. They'd take food. Mm. They couldn't eat. And that, it, it but his God talks. Yes. His God yes. Uh, touches him. His God encourages him. Mm -hmm. And his God speaks to yes. him. And none of this that this giant could say about one of their idol gods mm -hmm. because they just stand there and do nothing. Mm -hmm. They cannot. They can't speak. They Amen. can't hear. They can't see. And these people think they can, mm -hmm. but they don't. When I was in India, I asked them one time. I saw them putting the food out to feed one of the idols, and I said, you really think that that food's going to be gone? And uh, they said, well, we come back later and we'll take it away. But see, that idol there, they were so thinking, mm -hmm. we have to do this. Of course, they, in India, they have over, believe it or not, this sounds so uh, like far-fetched, but they have over 300 
million gods that they pray to mm. and that they, I do not, I, I'm just thankful for having a part yeah. in bringing the, the, light mm -hmm, the light to especially children Amen. too. And um, I love missions. And to to go and bring and tell this, about this God too that David Amen. was there is the same same God, mm, same God. He's alive amen. today. Well, you know, there's a scripture that says, um, it talks about, you know, you have a God that has eyes but sees not, you have sees a mouth not. that speaks not, has ears but hears not. Mm -hmm. How awesome is it that we serve a living God that speaks to us and we can, we can hear now, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the world don't think, you know, you, we can hear from God or, you know, as, at what's going around now that, you know, you must be you know, mentally unstable, unstable <laughs> if, you, if you hear the voice of God and you talk back or whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, he made that possible. God made it possible by sending his only son to die on the cross. We can go into the holy of holies. Oh, yes. And we can commune with God ourselves. We don't have to have anyone else do it. I mean, it's good to, uh, we don't have to have a priest to do it. Uh, that's, I mean, I, I, I love that. You know, I love, um, I respect different people's beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I have friends that, you know, we just agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in all I can do is speak the truth. All, I can, all you and I can do is live the life before them That's and right. um, let them see how God moves in our lives. Mm -hmm. Let them see um, when we're called to battle, just as David is being called to battle in, in this story, um, what all we are prepared for. Oh, yes. uh, we, you know, we just can't uh, just jump in. Oh, because a lot, you know, a lot of people, they're exuberance. They get excited with their emotions and stuff and think they can, you know, just do. But, hey, you've got to be prepared. Do exploits. Yes, <laughs> yes. We've got to be prepared. We've got to have that prayer life. Yes. I can't say it enough. We've got to have the prayer life, the, you know, the fasting, renewing of our mind daily. And His Word. Daily. And His Word. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's how we renew our, our mind daily is through His Word. Because sometimes, you know, uh, there are times when I read scripture and I think, Sister Faye, that uh, I'll never remember this, but mm -hmm. I have always found that uh, when the time comes when I need that word, the Holy Spirit brings it remembrance brings and you quote it just like that. And, and that's the way the Holy Spirit does. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, well, the way God intended for it to be, to give us uh, the encouragement to know we are more than conquerors through him. That last, uh, the 37th verse, it says, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. So that convinced Saul. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a, Saul had a doubt there for a moment, evidently, but through the the faithfulness and the, the the boldness of David that David had, it convinced Saul that for him to yeah. just go and uh, let's just let's get this done. We're going to mm -hmm. get this taken mm -hmm. care of. I believe there that Saul knew there was nothing going to change David's That's mind. That's right. Mm -hmm. And David, I wrote a little side note here. David was daring to go deeper. Mm -hmm. It changed his life. Mm -hmm. I mean, he knew. He knew what his God could do. Mm -hmm. And he knew that when he went to battle this giant, God was going to be with him mm -hmm. because it's the Lord's battle Amen. and then ours. That's right. And, and the scripture says that in the battle of the Lord's, mm -hmm. not ours. Mm -hmm. and, and I've often said uh, in that scripture when it says the battle is the Lord's, not ours, uh, he does the fighting for us, but he gives us the victory. The victory. Amen. Oh, amen. That's the kind of God we yeah. serve. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise yeah. God. And but, for the agnostics that doesn't believe, I get the woman on TV that just recently said something derogatory about um, one of the people that had told of an experience. And But you know, Sister Deborah, when people like that they don't know. Mm -hmm. They do not know. But I like the part of the old song that used to, I was there when it happened, mm -hmm. and I guess I ought to know. Amen. 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 And this is what David, he was looking back, I killed that bear, I killed mm -hmm. that lion, and other animals he would have had to fight, fight oh. too. 
but he knew God was on his side and God would be there Amen. for any battle that he was going to. And he did it with, with his hands. I mean, he the boldness. Can you imagine the boldness of mm -hmm. a person uh, bold enough to you know, just, just slay the, the bear and, and the lion? And, and take and, and the reach lion and take, by take, his whiskers. Yes. And, <laughs> and just, I can just imagine that, you know. But you know, we all have our different you know, visuals that we have. But uh, well, it excites me. He had to me. have the strength of the Lord because those lions weigh quite yes. a bit. Yes, they do. You know. Amen. So have you got some other scriptures you would like to share with us, Sister Faye? And well, we I... I just wrote down here that Saul and his army was running scared each time mm -hmm. that uh, Goliath showed himself twice a day. He constantly taunted and threatened Saul and his army. Mm -hmm. And Saul heard about what David had said, and he wanted David brought to him. One of his men had heard uh, something David said, and when he went and told Saul, that's when Saul said, bring him to me, mm -hmm. you know. And then, then he knew it wasn't going to change David's mind. That's right. So. And that's you know, that reminds me. That's why it's so important to uh, we need to be aware of what we're saying because we may think no one's listening, mm -hmm. but they're listening and they're watching our lifestyle. And something we can be saying just in our casual conversation can encourage that person or pull them down. That's right. And you know, they you know it may be someone around you that's just has just prayed, Lord, if you're real, make yourself real to me. And, and they ask the question of God, and then something they can hear you and I say right. uh, would be an answer to that prayer. I've right. seen it ha happen very much. And that's what is exciting because when we listen to the voice of God, if uh, too many times uh, we have the fear rise up, and we'll ask ourselves, Lord, is that you or is that just me? Yeah. Have you ever had that happen? Oh, about? <laughs> yes, many times. Many, many times. times. And sometimes I'll delay about going and doing something because down through the years I've learned because so-and-so says this, you're to do this. You're to... mm -hmm. Did God say this? Mm -hmm. God, and I've learned, unless I know it's God, mm -hmm. they mean well, but unless I mm -hmm. know God's going to tell me to. Right, right. Uh, Often uh, we have prophetic words spoken over us, mm -hmm. and I believe if it's from God, if it's from God um, it will resonate with our spirit. Yes, it will. Um, something will leap in our spirit, and that lets you know that the, it was from God. Sometimes uh, you know, we just got to be careful in what we listen to to make sure things line up with God. Mm -hmm. uh, now, don't go off and say that Deborah said she doesn't believe in the prophetic ministry. <laughs> no, I definitely believe in the prophetic ministry. Amen. I just know in these last days, there's going to be many false prophets, false teachers, uh, and just many false things, you know, uh, that's going to be going on. And that's why it's very important for you and I to Praise be God. in the Word of God. And that's why it's important, you know, David knew he knew, and he was called, and he, he wasn't going to let anything stop him. He knew he was called to battle. Can you imagine what he was thinking all that time in, in the field after he was anointed, uh, you know, just exciting knowing what's to come, mm -hmm. that he was, mm -hmm. he was called to battle. And when the right, appropriate time, when God was ready for him, I believe God was uh, putting in position everything mm -hmm. for when David got there. Mm -hmm. to slay the giant, don't mm -hmm. you? I believe it. I believe that. And even though he was just a youth, mm -hmm. I see the Lord using younger people, yes. even small. Mm -hmm. And God's no respecter of, I say, age. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm still teaching Sunday school, and I'm 74, and that I still want to be busy for the Lord. Amen. Uh, when he comes back to take us home or if I have to go by the way of, of the grave, I want to still be busy for the Lord. Amen. If it's on a mission trip. If up to it's the very end. Up to the very Amen. end. Amen. Because then and I say, if he raptures us out of here, if you don't like shouting, <laughs> don't you get on the cloud with me because I, I'm ready to go. I've, ready to I've, go. I've heard people jokingly say sometimes that uh, if you see me rising up the air, don't you grab a hold of you my feet. <laughs> Praise yeah. God. You know, it, we have a lot of exciting things to look forward oh, to. Oh, I think so. According to the Word of God. Um, 
I count it a privilege to be in this time and age. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have fear rise up within the, them, and um, but uh, I don't think a child of God should have anything to fear. Mm -mm. If you know, if their heart is right with God, that is something you know. I pray every morning when I get up and when I go to bed. You know, I I pray and I and so, you know I ask the Lord. You know, it is well with my soul. You know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say that and I'll, I'll, I'll sing that sometimes because I do, I feel, you. we know whether we're right with God or oh, not. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, and I've often said, I don't want on, on Judgment Day to something that small keep me mm -hmm. from getting to heaven. That's it. Now, many people may say, well, we serve a loving God. He wouldn't do that. No, he wouldn't, but we will. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. his word, uh, it's, He's adamant about his word. Yes. And all he asks us is to be obedient. And that's what he asked of David. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure all the other soldiers that kept turning and, and running, they too had the same opportunity mm -hmm. to uh, exhibit their faith in their God. Mm -hmm. We have that same opportunity to exhibit our faith in yes, God. Yes, we do. When something arises in your life, when a battle comes your way, we have the opportunity to exhibit that faith that we have in God. Amen. And sometimes we may have to say it over and over and over again. You know, call those things that be not as though so they good. were. That's in Romans 4 and 17, mm -hmm. if, you know, if any of you want to know where that's at. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Mm -hmm. But getting back to uh, David, that he was called uh, to battle. What all do you think was going through his mind, Sister Faith? I mean, you know, just... I think David was so anxious to really, he wanted to get it on and just get that giant mm -hmm. down. Let's get this over with. <laughs> because when you start reading on the word, it was all has to do with his lineage. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that'll be a little bit later. No, that'll be a good but, study. <laughs> <laughs> so we always find more things to study uh, on. <laughs> right. And, uh, but he, David, being the fighter that he was, being the, what he'd learned mm -hmm. as being with Saul and seeing their army, uh, he had that military, we can do this. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can bring this enemy down. And David just couldn't wait. He didn't want to wait around. He wanted him out. He wanted him, uh, you know, out of there because that valley now, it, it was a hundred feet wide. Mm -hmm. So Saul on one side and his army and Goliath and the Philistines on the other, but there's a hundred yards between them. And, but he taunts uh, Saul and his army constantly. He was wearing them down. Mm -hmm. He knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He knew he'd wear that army down, and mm -hmm. he, it would be easy to uh, just take them on out. Well, you can, you know, there's you can wear a person down mentally, emotionally, mm -hmm. physically, mm -hmm. having them do something that's really uh, they don't need to be doing. You, you, the enemy will, the enemy will even uh, wear you down, keeping you busy. Right. And uh, even though it's something for the ministry, you, mm -hmm. and you think you're doing good, uh, the enemy has his hands in it sometimes because he wants to keep you distracted. From the true cause, mm -hmm. and, you know, and I was caught up in that one, at one time, mm -hmm. early in, in ministry, that uh, I was so busy doing this, so busy doing that, and, and I thought I was doing good because I was doing ministry things. Right. And uh, but that was that was the giant in my life at the time. But God taught me that uh, the enemy was distracting me, and it was a taking away my focus off of him, away from my study time, away from my prayer time, because when the end of when, in the day would come, or even in the morning, I would be so tired that I, you know, mm -hmm. how often have you picked up the Word of God and start to read, and all of a sudden you get real sleepy? Oh, Has anybody yeah. ever done that? Oh, <laughs> it, you know, we we're won't tired. Even go there. We won't so go. I, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I always ask God to give me strength to yeah. read His Word and to give me understanding, revelation of His. Not a new yeah, revelation, not a new, but, but it's a, a deeper understanding mm -hmm. of. His revelating word, amen. Amen. Because his word will always get you fired up. Oh, I mean, yes. if you and but fear is a weapon that Satan uses to weaken. And Goliath knew that. Mm -hmm. He knew to make Saul and his men just shake mm -hmm. in their boots, so to speak. Uh, they were so afraid of him. 
But he was just a man. Mm -hmm. He was just flesh. Mm -hmm. But yet, because of his height and because of his bellering to them, you know, while what he was going to do to them, uh, it weakened them. And that fear, I believe fear overtook them so bad mm -hmm. that they ran. They ran. And, but, and a person uh, has to be really scared to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Even, well, think about the children of Israel. What all they saw the Lord perform, what he did, and still they rebelled. They rebelled. And, and that just blows my mind sometimes. But, you know, we're, we're flesh, we're, uh, we're carnal, but uh, we want what we want sometimes and can't wait on God. Spoiled it, children. Spoiled children, mm. amen. I'm reminded of the story where, you know, he told, told him to go out a certain time and gather the manna, but no more than this, you no know, a certain thing. thing. But some people got greedy. And, but what happened? It spoiled. It spoiled. And stuff. So we need to learn to listen to the voice of God when he says mm -hmm. to do it a certain way. And yeah. I believe David done this. He, When the Lord said to do something a certain way, that's exactly the way he did it. He mm -hmm. didn't deviate from the word of God, the voice of God, the instructions of God. He didn't deviate and do his own thing. He done exactly what God told him mm -hmm. to do. Amen. Well, I believe, too, that Saul, he didn't want David to be harmed. Mm -hmm. That's why he offered him his armor, mm -hmm. knowing that uh, I believe Saul was a tall person. I think I read that. Uh, but here, little David, we always heard little David, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, can you imagine putting on his mail, his coat of mail, mm -hmm. and all that heavy stuff and trying to walk around. And, did, and, didn't, and the, said, didn't the other others kind of laugh Yeah, and, and make fun of him? But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of people, when people laugh at you or something, when uh, God has spoken to you do something, and they look at you and, and uh, they can't do that. Mm -hmm. And there's been many times that, uh, you know, God has asked me to do something, and I'll say, you want me to do what? <laughs> you so know? what? So, uh, <laughs> but uh, if God asks you, then he's confident he's enough already. in you. He's already got it lined up that you're going to be victorious. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's Amen. it. If we'll take him at his word. Amen. At Amen. his word. But it said here that, so Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put a mm -hmm. bronze helmet on his head. This is uh, starting in the uh, 38th verse. So, uh, and put a helmet on his head, and he also clothed him with the coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, mm -hmm. for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Mm -hmm. David took the armor off. Well, the, He knew he wasn't going to need it. I mean, he trusted in the Lord. You know, in much. Ephesians, I, I wrote it down because I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. It talks about the armor of God. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to read this because I, I want to be very precise. Mm -hmm. um, in Ephesians 6 and 17, it says that the helmet represents salvation. Saul's helmet did not fit David, mm -hmm. so he couldn't wear it. Mm -mm. Here's the key. You cannot get into heaven on someone else's salvation. That's it. Amen. That's it. Only your own salvation will gain you entrance into heaven. The same goes for everyone. None of Saul's armor fit David, and he had to take it all of, off. No one else's armor is going to fit you either. Amen. You have to have your own armor. No matter how shiny things look, you know, the world, you know, uh, makes things look shiny. You know, oh, you got to have this to do this in ministry. You've got to have, no, uh, God supplies what you, he supplies the mm -hmm. call. When mm -hmm. he calls you into ministry, when he calls you into battle, he supplies those things for us, doesn't he? He does. I, I've seen it happen over and over. Well, have you ever had the Lord, um, while you're praying in that, and then the Lord will just, you hear his voice, why don't you trust me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you think that won't make you sit up and take notes. Yes. But I do trust you, Lord. The Lord knows, no, mm -hmm. and this you didn't, this mm -hmm. you didn't. But he, he, did, he, he has said that to me, and I had to repent. Oh, Lord, yes. Lord, forgive me. I've, I've and, had to do the same thing many times, Sister Faye. But I've made mistakes down through the years, and I, I don't want to make more. You know, well, but we just put our hand in his and he'll he'll show us. He'll lead us. I hope that uh, I would learn from the experiences when I fail God and he makes me aware of those things. And then I repent that uh, that uh, 
I would learn from those experiences and not repeat them. Sometimes we go around the same mountain over and right. over. I, I think of it sometimes like we're on a, merry, a, you know, a child's merry-go-round. It's going around and around and around. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we want to hang on and do the same thing. Over, we know it's not working. It's not. We know it's not what God told us to do, mm -hmm. but we're just hoping it will. But then sometimes we wise up and we jump off that merry-go-round while it's still going, and it, it's um, it's just like it sets us on the right path. And uh, just as David, um, when we in the next study that we're going to be studying, we'll find that he's ready to go to the front lines, and that he's ready to do what God has called him to do. Yes, and. Um, but I, today, I want everyone to know they must have, an, you must have an armor of God. Yes. Many people turn to psychics. Don't turn to psychics. The Word of God says it's wrong. You know, power crystals. You know, I've heard a lot of people mm -hmm. talking about power crystals mm -hmm. uh, to ward off evil uh, rabbit's foot. Just uh, What's the saying? Just ask the rabbit how lucky that was for him, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And trust in God. Trust in what His Word says. When He says, uh, I will do this. Mm -hmm. I will do this. And, you know, don't bargain with God. Uh, just, you know, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. There's this old song, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. Mm -hmm. uh, to trust and to obey. Trust and obey. Will we still be a little bit nervous, have just a little bit fear? Uh, yes, I believe we'll have butterflies, but we have the confidence in knowing that God is there right there with us. He's already put laid things into position that we will be victorious, we'll be overcomers if we'll just do it God's way. And sometimes, Sister Faye, we, uh, we uh, even though we know God has told us to do it a certain way, mm -hmm. we still rebel a little bit and go off and do our own thing, don't we, sometimes? <laughs> and then we have to come back to the Lord and right. say, here it is, Lord, I've made a mess. Uh, forgive straighten me. Straighten it out. You know, forgive so, me. Yeah. And you know what? He is faithful to do that. He even is. though we make mistakes, He's faithful to forgive us and He'll straighten it out for us sometimes. Well, this week has been good as well. I'm looking forward to next week's study. Well, next week's going to be really good. I hope all of you guys will tune in for next week. And be encouraged to know that God loves you. And no matter what you're going through today, He's got it all under control. Until next time, I want you to walk in love. And I want you to continue to keep your faith. Bye for now. Encounters is sponsored by Vessels of Honor Worldwide, AAA Enterprises, and the viewers. If you would like to contact Encounters, email encounterswithgod at comcast.net or write to us at 117 Sunset Place, Portland, Tennessee, 37148.